we are going to talk about Elijah Wasike Ohwamwangale. He was born in 1939 in Kimilili, Bungoma East, which later became Kimilili, Webuya, and so on. He studied in Bungoma and Mombasa. It was while he was studying in Mombasa that he became interested in agriculture. When he became interested in agriculture, he ended up studying for a diploma in agriculture at Egerton College, Njoro. Who was the principal of Egerton College, Njoro at that time? It was William Odongo Omamo, better known as Kaliech. And Kaliech noticed three very bright agriculture students and offered them scholarship to Virginia State University. One of the three was Elijah Wasike Ohua Mwangale. Elijah Wasike Ohua Mwangale went to Virginia State University where he got his bachelor's and master's degrees in agriculture. Then he went back to the same Egerton College, which today is now called Egerton University, where he became a lecturer there. That was in 1967. And who was the chairman of Board of Governors? Michael Blundell. Michael Blundell was a Kaburu who was the last minister of agriculture before Kenya attained independence. But he was a very influential person. And he used to say that uh, Elijah Wasike Okwa Mwangale was a riotous fellow who could easily incite other lecturers to strike. I've repeated, he said, who could easily lead other lecturers to strike, meaning that he never led the lecturers to strike, but the chairman of the board of governors felt that uh, Mwangale was that type. Still in the 60s, uh, when he was at Egerton, or the time when he came back from USA, he was very much against the then education of 7423. Uh, presumably, the reason was that uh, because he studied in the US, and in the US they did not have advanced level education. He was, every, every time he had... Uh, uh, an opportunity to speak, he used to say that uh, Form 5 and 6 was a wastage of everything. It is supposed not to be there. Uh, nobody ever asked him why, but uh, it is believed that uh, most likely it's because he he studied in uh, the U.S. where there, there, there has never been A-levels. Then later on, he became the MP for Bungoma East. And uh, when he was the MP for Bungoma East, uh, he was a low, what do you call it? Not somebody who can be known so much until when there was the JM Karaoke Inquest, Parliamentary Select Committee on JM Karaoke's death. He was the chairman, and uh, he was deputized by Mark Muthaga from Nakuru. And he gave Daniel Arabmoy a very hard time in parliament until people started joking 
that uh, because every time he challenged Moi in parliament, Moi would repeat by saying, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, until the name stuck and he became known as Mr. Chairman because of chairing the uh, JM, select, uh, J JM Parliamentary Select Committee. They had a lot of challenges. They had a lot of challenges uh, starting from, of course, you, you all know about my participation in the JM Karaoke's death. Uh, he played, uh, uh, I mean, whenever he could summon senior civil servants to come and appear before the parliamentary select committee, they would uh, ignore him with contempt, including the man whom I consider to be my, my maternal uncle, uh, Ben Gethi, uh, minister for state for the office of the president, uh, Bio Koinange, and so on and so forth. They disregarded that. And whenever they went to the field where they were supposed to get, uh, especially from provincial administration, who were supposed to coordinate for them and make their work easy, it was not easy. Finally, when the report was ready, they were summoned to State House where uh, Jomo Kenyatta looked at it and said, looked at the whole report and said, hey, if you have mentioned these people, then uh, it means that uh, I, were I not the head of state, you'd have even mentioned me. And uh, Jomo Kenyatta took one of the copies, removed the name of Wanyoike Thungu, removed the name of Mbio Koinange, and removed a few names and said, can you present this before parliament? But uh, Martin Shikuku was a member of that group, had already sneaked a photocopy of that, even though the report that was presented to parliament was that one which had the Kenyatta signature and was cancelling some names. With all that hardship, they went to parliament and tried to convince members of parliament to vote for the report. Uh, that is when Pius, Henry Pius Masinde Muriro, who was the minister for works, voted against the government. He voted for the JM Karaoke Parliamentary Select Committee and also Peter Kibisu voted against the government. Peter Kibiz was an assistant minister. I don't know of which ministry, but he was an assistant minister. Then uh, Moi led a, a strong, uh, you know these things about uh, Kanu Parliamentary Committee saying that we will vote this way or that way. So Moi led that until the report was noted. It was noted. Now, being noted means no further action. Was adapted and noted. It was yani, accepted and noted, meaning no further action. Because if you find, if you look at other parliamentary select committee, like the one I participated in on Robert Ouko, it was said that uh, I have given this and these points so the investigative uh, arms like the CID and so on should follow up my leads and take further action. But when it, com when it comes to the earlier one of JM Karaoke, they said that we have adapted and noted, so no further action. Uh, when uh, Mwangale heard that, that is when he talked about a Luya proverb. The Luya proverb which says, uh, there was a day a hyena was walking along the footpath and got a stone on the way. So he told the stone, get out of the way, I want to pass. The stone, of course, did not hear. It is an innate uh, thing. It did not hear what the hyena said. The hyena repeated twice, thrice. The, the stone did not do that. Then the hyena told the stone, even if you don't, if you de, if, even if you ignore me, but you have heard what I've said, 
So he was trying to tell the government that even if this is a very hard stone to move, but you have heard what you have said, that uh, JM was killed by the government. Uh, then when he did that, uh, Pius Mas Henry Pius Masinde Mudro was, was removed as the Minister for Works and his place was taken over by Nathan Waliaura Ohuamunoko. I think the way I've pronounced is only Bukusu who can pronounce that. Elijah Wasike Ohuamwangale. Then there is Henry Pius Masinde Ohuamuriro. Then there is Nathan Waliaura Ohuamunoko. So that is how uh, uh, those people ended. And uh, Peter Kibisu, after that, they remembered that Peter Kibisu, they remembered two things. They remembered that uh, there is a time when Mark Muthaga had beaten up his wife and the wife had complained in the police station. And they had patched up. The only mistake is that the wife had not gone back to the police station to withdraw the case. So uh, Mark Buthaga was arrested and uh, even when the wife was protesting, oh, see, nee, 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 Mark Buthaga was jailed. And then there was also a trumped up charge for Peter Kibisu and Peter Kibisu was jailed. And when he was jailed, that is when Sebstone, Moses Sebstone Budamba Mudavadi took over. And then Mudamba Mudavadi, uh, when he died, my DVD took over. My DVD took over, and then my DVD stayed there until Akaranga, Likaranga, yeye. Then from Akaranga, so on and so forth. That is where Peter Kibisu came from. Now back to Elijah Wasike Ohwa Mwangale. That was 1975 or 76, because that is 75, 76 is when they did the JM Parliamentary. And then two years later, Jomo Kenyatta died. When Jomo Kenyatta died, Moi took over. But as I've been saying, that Moi was the figurative president. The people who were ruling that time was Charles Njonjo. And in the wings, there was Geoffrey Getahi Moroa Karioki. Now, uh, those people... Moi wanted to remove them. And Moi wanted to remove them. Elijah Wasike Ohwa Mwangale, being sacrophantic, was in the forefront. Was in the forefront in that. Then it reached a time when people were referring to Njonjo as the traitor, but they were not referring to Njonjo directly. I remember... There is a time when Njonjo went to Britain, to London. Uh, when he came back upon landing, that was in May 1983. And then uh, when uh, he landed on 25th or 26th, Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, 25th or 26th, uh, May 1983, when he landed over uh, that day, two days later, that is Friday, May 27th, 1983, Moy stated that from that day henceforth, no minister will go out of the country without the express permission of the president. Even today, uh, 40 what? Is it 41 years later? We have had Moy... We have had Kibaki, Uhuru, now Ruto. Even today, just like I said that the 35 years constitution change was placed there to block, to block Tomboya. Now, today we have a, reg a, a requirement that a cabinet minister and some senior civil servants, before they go to a foreign country, they ha the, 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 the trip has to be cleared from state house. That is the day. Mark my word, the day that 
started that was on Friday 27th May 1983 that is when Moy said from today henceforth any minister assistant minister permanent secretary wanting to go on official duty or personal trip out of the country has to get clearance from state house that is the time when Njonjo came and then there's a cartoon which appeared I don't know whether it is in the standard or nation where the cartoonist had written when Jonjo came the cartoonist was he showed that an old lady was telling her grandson that I hear the the traitor is back in Nairobi can you take me to Nairobi so that I see him you see everybody everybody knew anybody with a standard for education knew that it was Jonjo who was being referred to and then uh, there was a time when there was an uh, there, there was a PCA church service uh, presided over by Reverend Timothy Joya, where Reverend Timothy Joya said that uh, heart. I mean, when the leadership is hurt, it 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 leads the other ships astray, and he said if it is a uh, 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 if it is a, a train and the engine derails, all other will derail. And in that church service, it was attended by Charles Mogane Jonjo. So people came, oh, uh, what, you, you know, interpretation, reading between the lines, whatever, whatever. So things used to go round, 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 and nobody, everybody knew what they were talking but nobody would come and say that. Then one day, one day in Parliament, Elijah, Elijah Wasike Okwamangale stood up and pointed at Charles Jonjo and said, Honorable Charles Jonjo, you are the traitor that everyone is talking about. It took him hours, if not days, for Charles Jonjo to resign, and they started off the Charles Jonjo uh, inquiry, which, of course, never came up with any proof, never came out with any proof, and I've been talking uh, in that uh, Jonjo inquiry, Raila was in uh, detention, he came out of detention and gave evidence in that uh Jonjo inquiry. So Jonjo inquiry came out. I believe that the Nani was never found a guilty of anything, but Moi came and said he has been found guilty and I've forgiven. So from that time henceforth, uh Mwangale became so psychophantic that uh those days before the district focus for real development, things used to happen. And that is it also played part in our uh, what do you call in our um, 2010 constitution whereby we brought in devolution devolution because uh, it became so much that for you to develop your area you have to bow, bow down to the president so when president moi would go to various places for various activities people would tell him mutukufu rais unaona hii barabara ya kutoka luandeti kwenda manda Eh, hey, hiyo barabara hiyo tungependa yekwe lami. If you are in government books, good books, say itaewa itaewa lami mara moja. Hiyo hitu. Wapi mimi? Wapi mubwa ya yega lami hiyo barabara? Kutoka wapi? Kutoka London mpaka Manda eh. Yega hiyo barabara lami. But if you are perceived to be anti moi uh, you say, oh, barabara kutoka luandeti mpaka manda, tunataka ye kwe lami. <laughs> You'd be told, ite kwa lami when the funds are ready. So people used to tell the president, tengeneza kwetu. But then, Mwangale would, he, he, Luhias especially, because used to call him tena. So he'd say, he would be given time and he'd say, mutukufu rais, we are content and we have developed, we whatever. Can we clap for the president? Tena. 
tena that is what he used to tell the president and he was so much unpopular on the ground elections 83 <laughs> those are the people you you, you want to, st- to stand again as they say we the muti anyayo 83 88 mlolongo you know about mlolongo uh then uh, 92 a very active young man came he went and swept underground whatever whatever and that man is called mohisa ohwa kitui mohisa ohwa kitui is the one who came and overthrew him he never tested politics again bana ba mai kake na kanikembere ne mbora no khabonane muchuli 